Hey everybody, welcome back to Tar Takes. It's August 29th and we're ready to dive into the UNC athletic seasons that are about to go underway. We have football coming up shortly, basketball later in October, but just for today we'll be talking about football. I'm Ryan Lipton alongside... I'm David Matlock. And I think we're ready to dive into the UNC Sports on Tar Takes. A quick thing, uh, we're only doing two segments today, but we'll dive right into more NFL, more UNC basketball, and football later this weekend, and we'll have more videos out shortly. Also, keep up with UNC Athletics. Check out the daily, the sorry, the weekly roundup on Relevant. It can be found under the page in Tar Takes on the app Relevant or on the Franklin Street page. Go Heels! Check it out. It'll give you weekly updates of everything happening in the athletic world related to UNC. Um, but so let's begin. The Tar Heels kick off this weekend in Berkeley against the California Bears. Go Heels! But there wasn't great news this summer. 14 North Carolina football players were suspended. Was, they were caught. It was 13, was it? It was 13 or 14, whatever the number is. Gotta be exact, um, dude. Well, you know, we'll, we'll, we can double check that. You guys can look that up, but it doesn't really matter. Um, well, the, the big thing it's was... It's double-digit numbers. Chaz Surratt was also one of the people who got suspended. I mean, yeah. when you have a... a QB race between Nathan Elliott and Chaz Surratt, you definitely don't like to hear that one of your top contending quarterbacks is going to be suspended for four games. Yeah, I mean, it's not good news. He started last year, and, and it, it begs the question, with, with all the suspensions, we had a horrible season last year, only winning three football games. We had so many games. I mean, still, whatever, whatever the fact, the facts remain. You only won three football games. Doesn't matter how many injuries you had, but is is Larry Fedora sort of on the hot seat? Obviously, he's not on the, he's not in jeopardy of being fired this year. But should he be with all these players being suspended and a not a great outlook on the football field? What do you think? Oh, uh, well, again, I think the least of UNC's worries right now is Larry Fedora. Honestly, what UNC's worries right now are who is going to play quarterback, which the only way this team is going to get better is if we find a starting college caliber quarterback. Um, but, yeah, I mean, the the injuries last year for that season, we don't have to necessarily check that out for Fedora. He hasn't really gotten all of his recruits in yet. We had a good recruitment class this past summer. It was like 26th overall. It wasn't great, but it's definitely a step in the right direction. But, um, yeah, I mean, the leadership, you, you start to question the leadership when you have 13 guys selling college uh, distributed apparel. Especially when one of them's Chaz Surratt. Yeah, you're a potential starting quarterback. So it's definitely not a good look. But, um, I mean, we I think Larry Fedora's fine. But, I mean, what he really needs to be worrying about is who's going to be under center which is looking like it's going to be Nathan Elliott. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't hit the panic button yet. I think you have to give Larry Fedora this season. He, it, it's embarrassing when you have 13 players get suspended for selling shoes, and some of them are getting four games. That's, that's a lot of people. That's a lot of games that you're missing. And they didn't perform well in the football field last season. And I think we'll know this year whether it was last season a fluke because of injuries or was it, Fedor is not as good of a coach as we might think, or maybe the talent isn't as good. I will say this, David mentioned that it's the 26th ranked recruiting class this year, so he's bringing in pretty good talent, not top tier talent. He got seven four stars, which I think, considering last year, I don't even know if we had a single four star on that team that we got last year, but I mean, we've got seven four stars, obviously you'd like to see like one five star, but UNC's not really in the running for that yet, but the fact that we have seven five, four stars, and uh, a bunch of solid three-star athletes, uh, which it shows me Larry Fedora is at least pushing us in the right direction. There's also the fact, and, and you also mentioned this too, they need to find someone at the quarterback position. Um, you know, I'm not sure if, if Nate Elliott or Chaz Stratt is the answer, and they've been getting, look at, if you look at the seven four-stars, offensive guard, wide receiver, wide receiver, wide receiver, offensive tackle, and two other quarterbacks. So. They're trying to give the quarterback the best possible situation to succeed by giving him tons of weapons on the outside as well as protection up front. And then they still have two four-star quarterbacks. So I think 
this year you might have to be a little bit cautious with Larry Fedora. I don't know if it's going to be a great year because of the quarterback position. But if those two guys who are the four stars don't work out after that, and it's Cade Fortin and Juice Rudder, Cade Fortin was the 18th ranked quarterback and Jace Rudder was 24th, one of those two guys doesn't work out with all the talent that is now around the quarterback position with these four-star recruits, then I think you have to look at Larry Fedora and say, is he really the coach that is supposed to lead UNC? Because he's an offensive guy. I mean, obviously, like, he, I don't know if Larry Fedora really knows what defense is considering all, four of the, all seven of these four-star players are on the offensive side of the ball. I don't see one damn defensive player on that four-star list. And, 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 you, and you go back to the future when they had Mitch Trubisky and they had Marquise Williams and they were able to put points up on the board. They were a good football team, but they weren't great because of the defense. And now he can't even get a quarterback in there that can play football well and score. And I think that's an issue with Larry Fedora. We'll see this season. I think this season will tell a lot, but... The season after next, I think if it's not a great season, if they're if they're not winning nine or ten games, or they don't look vastly uh, improved, then you games have to. It's a bit of a stretch well, for you, UNC you have football. To, I mean, if you want great football, you have to expect it. And I mean, nine, if, if Larry games, Fedora, if Larry Fedora only ends up with four wins this year, I'll say he's going to be maybe on the hot seat. If he ends up, I think a realistic goal for him the season after next is to get seven or eight wins. If he well, gets seven or eight wins, let's let's I, propose I, yeah. let's propose this question. How many wins does Fedora need this season to keep his job? I mean what like what you know, what's ballpark yeah? I mean they they just for people who don't know, they, they go at Cal to start, then at Eastern Carolina, then at home versus number twenty one ranked UCF at home against Pitt, then they have a tough stretch at number 8 Miami, home against number 20 Virginia Tech, but then the schedule isn't that bad with at Syracuse. Well, at, at Syracuse, though, we're not, we're not taking into account that defense isn't great anymore, and, and they the Syracuse quarterback, that guy, if he's healthy, he's going to he's gonna give you some rough times right there. He's a very good player. Not necessarily a good passer, but he's a very good athlete. Can put points on the board. Yeah, I mean, I, I would just say I, I think he, he's going to have to win six or seven. It, you know, six is, is a little... For I this year, for this year, he can, he, can, because, he can win like four, and honestly, I don't... But the schedule is the schedule's such a poor schedule. Cause you, you, Our schedule last year was... East Carolina, yeah. And they, they, oh, yeah, we had Louisville. Well. Well. I mean, they, Louisville, they three ranked opponents the entire year, um, and there's no telling that... Miami, or, or I mean, Miami will be ranked by the time they get there, but UCF and Virginia Tech are both one game away. If they lose one game before UNC plays them, they'll be out of the top 25. So you could easily have UNC playing one ranked opponent this year, and if you only win four or five games, that looks horrible for Larry Fedora. I don't care that UNC is a basketball program. They're still UNC. They should still be able to dominate recruiting football in the state of North Carolina, which... It's still a very popular sport in North Carolina, so you should be able to get good production out of the state. And if you're not having, if you're not playing, you look on schedule, the other side of the ball, sir. But yeah, I, I mean, I think he only needs. To, I think, I think if he gets four or five wins, he doesn't have to worry about his job. I mean, I think four, four or five is pretty low. But well, well, I have one, one last thing. What, what's your prediction? How many wins this year for the Tar Heels? My prediction this year for the Carolina Tar Heels is that they will win five games. I mean, I, it's interesting because I feel like you have, I have more of a negative outlook on UNC football than you might at the moment, but I have them winning six games. I think their schedule's pretty easy. I think uh, they, any of the ranked opponent games will be pretty tough for them to win. There's two And then, man, yeah, it, it, it's also tough to know um, how long, when, when will Michael Carter get back. If Michael Carter's there, then maybe he goes off against Cal. Right, and right, right. So there's there's w, no then, shot we're getting this game versus Miami. I mean, that's just not Yeah, it's at Miami. Virginia Tech is out of there. and But then every toss-up game, when I look at Carolina football and I see a toss-up game like like Georgia Tech. Well, Georgia Tech's not really a toss-up game. But, dude, but Georgia Tech NC has given State. us a lot of trouble in the past. No, yeah, no. Football. Georgia Tech will I beat. Think I was, think they're yeah, going to win, honestly. Honestly. When when I, I went down to... Uh, Bobby Dodd last year watched us get 
destroyed. I got screamed out of the stadium wearing my UNC blue and got heckled. And there's also this. This obviously we weren't planning on talking about this, but you can get a ticket for six dollars at Miami against North Carolina. That must mean Miami's not taking us seriously. Obviously, at all. Not. you can get a six dollar ticket to the game and six we, we dollars, might, dude. If, if it's a if it's a single digit game, then I think we win. Oh man. I think I think that's a win for the yeah, UNC no, football yeah, program. But that was just a quick preview for Carolina football. We're we're gonna go more in depth um, later this weekend, as well as NFL season more just NFL. around the corner. The football NFL season. The Raiders. We'll definitely be talking about them coming up. We're soon. gonna be talking about the Falcons, um, a team that people actually care about. Colin Cowherd likes the Falcons. Surprisingly, I don't, I don't really get it. But we'll we'll definitely discuss that later, as well as UNC basketball. It is a good time to be a UNC basketball fan with Nazir Little, Recon Black, and Kobe White on campus, as well as next year, Armando Bacot will also be joining the Tar Heels. We'll be talking about that in a few days, so catch us there. Also, remember the roundups on Relevant. Look us up on Tar Takes and Franklin Street. Please check us out, and we'll be back in a few days.